A static movement occurred in the late 19th century championed the visual and sensual qualities of art and design over moral or narrative considerations. This movement includes a radical group of artists and designers such as Morris, D.G. Rossetti, and Christine Rossetti. It is often used to describe late 19th century Britain, a time when the ideas of the Victorian age were losing precedence and being replaced by aesthetic values. The prevailing Victorian lifestyle broke down partly because of Britain's position in the emerging world powers. It faced new challenges in the political and economic fields. The golden age of Britain's empire was coming to an end, which laid the foundation of a new, strictly anti-Victorian method of thought. At that time, the aesthetic movement embraced beauty as the chief pursuit of both art and life. Oscar Wilde is considered as the father of aesthetics. He upheld the theory of art for art's sake. He carried forward the movement to its culminating point, throwing morality out of view altogether. For Wilde, art had no other aim except to gratify the taste of the artist. It had no bearing on social problems and no relation with morality. The artist lives in a world to his own, creating pictures of beauty and love for his own delight. He tried his hand at several kinds of writings characterized with display of cleverness. He wrote poems having no originality about them. Wilde wrote a number of comedies in the manner of artificial comedy of manners of restoration age. The Picture of Dorian Gray Through this beautiful novel, he became one of the most popular playwrights in England and abroad around the end of the 19th century. This novel is a beautiful example of his atheism. He represents the non-serious aspect of aesthetic movement, while Walter Pater represents the serious aspect. Some of his other famous works are The Importance of Being Earnest and Other Plays in 1895, The Happy Prince, 1888, The Nightingale and the Rose, 1888, The Counterville Ghost, 1887, and Salome, 1893. This movement influenced all areas of life, from music and literature to interior design and fashion. Its theme was to create art for art's sake and to exalt taste, the pursuit of beauty, and self-expression over moral expectations. The artist focused on the point that the arts should provide refined sensual pleasure rather than only conveying moral or sentimental messages. According to them, art has only one purpose, and that it should be beautiful, which they considered as the basic retrox and sort of art. Predecessors of this movement included Keats and Shelley and some of the pre-Raphaelites. D.G. Rossetti and Edward Burne Jones are mostly strongly associated with aestheticism. However, their approach to aestheticism did not share the creed of art for art's sake, but rather aspirated reassertion of those principles of color, beauty, love, and cleanness that the agitated and discouraging world of the mid 19th century needed so much. Important writers of this movement are Oscar Wilde, Swinburne, John Simmons, Vernon Lee, Ernest Dawson, Aubrey Birdsley, and Max Bourbon. Decadent movement was the late 19th century artistic and literary movement of Western Europe. It flourished in France but also had devotees in England and throughout Europe as well as in the United States. Decadence was the name given originally by hostile critics to several late 19th century writers 
who valued artifice more than the earlier romantics naive descriptions. Some of them adopted the name referring to themselves as decadents. For the most part, they were influenced by the tradition of Gothic novels and by the poetry and fiction of Edgar Allan Poe and were associated with symbolism and or aestheticism. This concept of decadence dates from the 18th century especially from Montesquieu and was adapted by critics as a term of abuse after the Cyrenisard used it against Victor Hugo and Romanticism in general. A later generation of Romantics such as Theophile Gautier and Charles Baudelaire used the word proudly to represent their rejection of what they considered banal or progress. During the 1880s, a group of French writers referred to themselves as decadents. The classic novel from this group is Juris Carl Jungsmann's Against Nature, 1884, often considered the first great decadent work, though others attribute this honor to Baudelaire's works. Prominent scholars of decadence such as David Weir now regard decadence as a decision between Romanticism and Modernism. In Britain, the leading figures associated with the decadent movement were Oscar Wilde, Audrey Birdsley, and some artists and writers associated with the Yellow Book. In the United States, the brothers Edgar and Francis Saltus wrote decadent fiction and poetry. Symbolism has often been confused with decadence. Several young writers were referred to derisively in the press as decadent during the mid 1880s. Jean Maria's manifesto was largely a response to this polemic. A few of these writers embraced the term while most avoided it. Although the aesthetics of symbolism and decadence can be considered to be similar in some respects, the two remain distinct. Max Turger wrote best selling attack on the movement, The Generation in 1892. A detailed study of the movement which attracted wide attention was the romantic agony in 1933 by Mario Paz.